Good morning. Sunday, May 30th. Um, Victoria is with us this week to teach us uh, the nine purifying breaths, which are a good uh, method preparing the energy and preparing the body before practice of meditation. Now that many of you have been doing this for a while, you know, um, we've been introducing some different techniques like through Lama Surya Das, who, who kind of gave us some glimpses of Dzogchen technique. And we, we've been uh, practicing that a little bit here and there. Um, but it's important to know that meditation is Obviously, it's about working with the mind, but it's also you do it through working with the body and that the body is not just, you know, bones and muscle and veins and, and uh, nerves and stuff, but there's also energetic channels that run through the body that directly affect and uh, meditation and that meditation affects these energy channels and we're going to go into that a little bit today so let's first set our intentions and make aspirations by saying the four immeasurables prayer may all beings have happiness and the causes of happiness may all beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering may all beings not be separated from the happiness that has never known suffering may they rest in equanimity free from attachment anger and aversion um so what's going to happen is Victoria's going to go into this uh, instructions of the nine purifying breaths um, and she'll probably take us through it twice and at some point she'll explain at the end of the nine purifying breaths we're going to go right into a, a nine minute meditation session and you can see for yourself how that um, you know how that uh, affects your the quality of your meditation or the experience of your meditation. After that, I'm going to read a couple of uh, passages um, from some lamas. While I'm reading, you can uh, use the Q&A function to ask any questions about the nine purifying breaths in particular or anything else. But I mean, you probably will have questions about that. After we meditate, there'll be some time when I'm reading from the uh, some Instagram posts from some great lamas. That, that'll be a good time to ask your questions. Or during her explanation, I'd say, like, you know, use the nine minutes to really meditate and just see how that affects it. So, uh, with that in mind, we'll turn things over to Victoria. So, <clears throat> uh, uh, doing the nine breaths purification means we're working with our subtle body. Uh, I mean, the gross level of our bodies, our physical organs, our skin, our hair, our, our bones. Our subtle body is the energy which supports our, our mind and as well as our, our life, our physical being. So to practice this, uh, you, you, you understand why the seven point Vairochana posture is so important. The reason why we sit in this cross-legged posture or on the chair with a very straight spine, bringing the chin a little bit in is to keep all of our channels very, very straight. This is the time when we really focus and internalize our mind. Our senses are not drawn outward, they're drawn inward. We're looking at our mind from a different perspective. We are also, uh, we will be inhaling pure blessed light and we will be exhaling all of the obstacles, negativities and ailments. Uh, the purification works on two levels, obviously. It works on the body in, in a medicinal sense, and anyone who's had acupuncture already knows about subtle body and, you know, the, the subtle, the, the uh, channels through which subtle energy pulsates and goes, and if there are blockages, that's where we go for acupuncture. And in terms of the mind, we use it in practice to purify obscurations of karma and just obstruction mental obstructions emotional obstructions and obstructions of ignorance so nick will bring up the uh the chart and by the way the the posture that you refer to the the varachana yes the seven point yes that's basically what we do when we sit you know 
uh, cross-legged or legs folded, back straight, you know, that, that that's what you're already doing. I've never explained it as such, but just so they know that's, the, that's the re- their point. The reason why that posture is insisted upon, and it doesn't matter if you're sitting in a chair or you're sitting uh, in a lotus, full lotus, the importance of everything is about the three channels being uh, completely straight and unobstructed. Also, your chin is a little bit tucked in because you will see from the diagram when it brings it up in a minute that the central channel, our wisdom channel, goes all the way to the crown and ends really at, at the crown. It has to be completely straight. So if we could bring the chart up, that would be great. Uh, I'll read you a little short description of the channels while you try to visualize them and sense them in yourself, inside your body. The central channel begins four fingers width below your navel, rises straight up through the center of your body and opens at the crown of your head. It is a channel of light, blue like a deep sunlit autumn sky. In the diameter, it is the size of your thumb. The two side channels are, one is red and one is white. They have diameters slightly smaller than the central channel. On your left side is the red channel. On your right side is the white channel. Now, in women, it is reversed. Uh, The old tradition, the Enigma tradition text always refer to the channels in males and females on the side channels. The central channel is always the same, our wisdom channel. The side channels are opposite in males and females, but you find your own comfort. Uh, you, You visualize with your own body what feels more right to you. When we start the breathing, the, the nine uh, breath purification, you will instinctually feel and, and see you know, the lights and where the channels are located in your body. The three channels form a junction four f- uh, finger width below the navel. You see where they all connect uh, slightly below your navel. Uh, the side channels rise straight up the body on either side of the central channel. However, as they approach the crown, they curve forward under the skull, pass behind the eyes and open one at each nostril. The right channel, the right white channel represents male energy and method or skillful means and opens at the right nostril. Uh, The white channel is also associated with, uh, it's called the lunar channel. It's associated with the father's sperm that's why it's uh, it is a white channel it is also the channel that when it's not purified carries our anger uh, carries the difficult negativity of anger and aversion and the red channel uh, which is connected to the ovum and the blood of the mother uh, is uh, called the wisdom channel Uh, the white channel is called the skillful means channel the red channel is called the wisdom channel and it's connected to the female energy it's called the sun channel and it is connected to it carries the energy when it's not purified carries the energy of desire and attachment so when we begin the practice try to really feel the air rising up through the channels and when we're working on the y channel you're expel you're inhaling pure air in of the blessings of all the Buddhas, luminous white air, air, think of it as the pure element of air, which keeps us alive and keeps everything alive. And you will be exhaling on the ex- exhale from the Y channel. Uh, you will be exhaling everything that's connected with the blockage of anger and aversion, your difficult situations, uh, your ailments, your you know the negativity that are specifically connected to anger on from the right channel again we will be inhaling pure buddha energy luminous white element of air completely pure that purifies our body on the inhale and on the exhale of the red channel we will be uh, 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 expelling stale air of desire of frustrations, of illnesses, uh, you know, things that uh, that are connected to attachments and that, you know, block us. And then 
in the end, we will be working with the central channel. We will be expelling ignorance and doubt. So uh, now we can take the chart off. I mean, try to really during the, the to, during the practice itself, try to really not just imagine, but try to sense the channels inside your body. Feel them. Inhale not through your lungs, through your gross body, but try to inhale through your subtle body. It's very, very important for meditation. You know, this is a beginning practice. On the other hand, this practice is used as an advance of all the other uh, more advanced practices because we are always clearing our body, setting our intention. We're clearing our obstacles, our ailments, our negativities. We're purifying before we engage in any other kind of practice. And this practice can be something very, very profound. It doesn't, you know, just because it's a, an opening practice before meditation sessions, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have profound effect on us. So we will close with our thumb. We will close the channel, the negative channel on the ring finger. And then we will uh, close the other three fingers, keeping uh, the, the, uh, the first finger open for the nostrils. And we will do the same on the other hand. This mudra, we always have it like this during this practice because we are closing, uh, we, we are closing off a negative channel. So we will start with our right side and uh, we will use the left hand under the right elbow. We're also here, it's not just a support. We are again closing a uh, channel with negativities. So we are doing it on both of our palms and we're doing it under, under the elbow. We're closing this off. So we will start with our right channel. We will inhale. So in males, it is the red channel. In females, it is the white channel. We will be inhaling three times. We will be inhaling pure white light going, coming through our nostril and uh, coming to the central channel. We'll be, we'll be exhaling out of the opposite nostril. Remember, we're exhaling all the impurities that are connected uh, all the negativities, ailments, whatever difficult situations, we will be exhaling them. We will be inhaling the purity and exhaling all the impurity. So, and both are going through the right channel right now. That's what we're doing first. Inhale and exhale. We will be inhaling through, we will close off the right hand, we'll close off the right nostril. We will be inhaling through the left channel. Yes. And then we will be exhaling through the right. We will move our finger. Um, when we do the three breaths of the first cycle, it is we do the first breath is long and forceful. The second breath is short and forceful. And the third breath is just smooth and long. Okay? Try to feel air going through your through through your channels moving through your two side channels so We will switch our hands. We're blocking the negative channel for negativity and closing off our right nos our left nostril. So inhaling through the right channel. Through. Inhaling through the right channel.
we will place our in the same position holding the same mudra we will place our hands on our knees and we will work with the central channel the important thing to know with the central channel on the left on the last exhale because the central channel ends at our crown on the last exhale we will be inhaling purity and exhaling doubt ignorance and obstacles that specifically lead you know obscurations to knowledge we will be exhaling everything that is an obstacle to our meditation and our understanding and our focus and concentration and on the very last exhale we will we will exhale through our central channel into and release into space on the third exhale through the top of the head through the top of the crown through the central channel we will we'll release into space and we will rest in space merging the inner and outer for a moment so this last round of three goes through both nostrils into the central channel and then out the same way yes the first two we will the first two we don't have to visualize it merging with space and going through the center of the crown but on the third exhale we will merge the inner and outer by exhaling uh, through the central channel through the top of our crown we will exhale through here and we will rest in inner outer as unified we are breathing through both nostrils now repeating the same first long and forceful second short and forceful and the third we will be breathing through the center out into merging into space question so the first is right hand on the right side when you breathe in through the left right you're imagining the, the left channel you're imagining the air going down you're imagining the air going down, down. through the left channel and you're exhaling all the impurities on the opposite and they're going side up, the, yes, impurities. the impurities are being expelled from your body whether it's you know you're working with channels so the important thing is that when you're working with your right channel where you block your nostril there are different variants of this practice what's important is that you really internalize your channels where they are if you're male you your red is on the right you know so when you're working with your right channel you're releasing attachment and desire and all the blockages that are connected with these kind of graspings on and through the Y channel you are releasing your anger and aversion and through the central blue channel you're releasing your ignorance you know with this you're also releasing all you all of your physical ailments as well as your mental blockages your emotional blockages all the difficulties that arise okay the only important thing is is to work with knowing which channel you're ex inhaling and exhaling through and connecting the visualization with the breath and trying to truly feel like the air is really moving through your subtle body now you have to connect to the subtle body in this practice it's not just we're doing inhaling with our normal organ stuff we are really working with our subtle channels so that's what's important in this practice to connect to the subtle body so we'll do one more round of this 
without commentary and on the last exhalation of the of the central channel the the cycle of the three of the central channel will go right into the meditation from that and feel the spaciousness on that last exhale feel the spaciousness think of the you know think of the stillness of your body the vastness of your body the spaciousness of your body being filled with luminous white air uh, you know think of the stillness of your voice and think of the spaciousness awareness and emptiness of your mind and stay in that so make the meditation about staying in that moment non-conceptually as much as you can or having thoughts come and go as michael has taught you from before but really trying to connect to your subtle body
have some questions. Maybe because we're on, um, let's go right to the questions instead of the reading. Um, actually, it might be easier if we switch so I can instead of Q and A. Um, if you like, also, if you want to just comment on how using the breaths have affected your meditation, that's good for us to hear as well. Um, what happens if you have a broken nose, deviated septum, and the exhale on the right is partially blocked? Does that mean negative energies are stuck in my body? No. It doesn't mean anything like that. I mean, most often, one of our, you know, uh, there's always sinus issues. So, I mean, there will be more obstruction on one side than the other. That's a very common thing. The important thing is that you're working with the channels. It's not so much about the physical element of it. It's about that you're visualizing and sensing the intrinsic map of your subtle body and your subtle energies. And... Uh, the the air that comes out through your nostrils is still the gross element it is not the subtle energy so don't worry about that and you will see with time as you practice more it will actually help you clear up your sinus issue or whatever obstruction that you have it'll become easier every time that you do it great okay and this and another question was the same about a deviated septum um sometimes it also helps to have a paper towel handy for obvious reasons uh, yes always try to blow your nose before you start the practice <laughs> um let's see we got some more here i felt more cleansed prior to meditating which seemed to make the meditation easier i mean that's kind of that's the point that's kind of the point so that's, that's exactly the point so this practice you used before meditation because you find that spaciousness inside you you stop all the conceptual thinking. Even if things arise, they're much, much lighter. They're fluffy. You can dismiss them very easily. You go into that large spaciousness of a very still body and a silent voice, you know, and, and the non-conceptual mind. You go into that very big kind of spaciousness, especially on the last breath when you dissolve your mind and you merge with space. The inner and outer should really, you should start to feel like they collapse that's before meditation but also use this practice when very difficult things arise like lama surya das said you know count to nine before you react so act don't react use this practice if you meet a very difficult situation breathe it in and exhale the negativity before you respond now you have this practice so you know if your anger arises you're working with with your white channel if desire and unfulfillment and frustration arises, you're working with your red channel. If you have blockages, you don't understand something, you feel density or, or dullness mentally, you're working with your central channel. Use the practice as you need it, and always before meditation session. Uh, Francesca is a little confused. I don't know if being female, I should have been doing the opposite of what we were doing. In females, the white channel is on the left, and the red channel is on the right. It's exactly the reverse of what we have on the chart. But, you know, only the old schools stress it, the older traditions stress it. If you feel comfortable visualizing it as it is on the chart, then please go ahead and do so. It's really not that important. The important thing is that you habituate and you remember where your channels are and that you can really work with them and breathe through them you know feeling that you're not just breathing through your physical organs but you're breathing through your channels and feeling the subtle energy move through all three channels uh do we keep our eyes closed after we merge with the universe that on the ninth breath when you kind of merge with the outside it, yeah. it doesn't matter because you're really looking with your inner vision. You're not staring at any detail. Now your mind is internally focused. Your mind has turned inward onto the channels and your sensation of breathing out through your central channel and merging with the space. Remember the inner space and outer space are identical. You're kind of collapsing the inner and outer distinction. You know, feel the sensation of truly breathing out with your head and just stay in that sensation and feel there's no inner and outer. That's what's important. 
uh, the eyes open and closed, it doesn't matter, whatever works for you. If you feel left distracted, close them. I do it with my eyes open. Donna says, I felt more clarity during the meditation. My mind was calmer. Well, that's what you do. You use this meditation, the non-purification breath, you bring your mind home. And you do it before meditation sessions, and you do it in difficult situations. Or at any time, just habituate yourself to coming to it because your subtle body is the deepest part of your being it's not your conceptual monkey mind that's caught up in senses and sensations and phenomena outside you are bringing your mind home you are you you are you're really looking at at, at your internal map at your, your you know your your more wholesome structure so habituate yourself with that this gave me a positive charge. I'm left with a similar feeling to that of stretching before a run. I felt wonderful. This made my mind clear to meditate. Perfect. Can you elaborate about the joining of inner and outer space on the third breath of the center channel or, so, or the ninth breath of the whole practice? Because the air that you breathe in and the air outside is the same. You know, it's space and awareness. You know, it is really just, you know, uh, you know, the inner and outer is a, is a conceptual construct. It's not a real thing. So at this time, when you are breathing out the last breath of the three cycles, when you're working with the central channel and you're expelling, you're, you're breathing out through your crown, you become aware that there is no inner and outer. That's that's the explanation lisa rinsler our friend lisa says Hi, lisa. Uh, will you please describe one more time what each channel stands for thank you the red channel uh is connected to the red is on which side again in females the red is on the right in males it's uh, on the left as in the chart uh the red channel stands for so uh i mean uh, the the afflictive emotion is uh, uh, desire, but it's also connected to the sun. It's called the sun uh, channel. It's connected to the mother's ovum and therefore blood. Therefore, the color is red, uh, and desire is the afflictive emotion. The white channel is Which called. Which will be on the left in the. In thing. women, it's on the left. That's. You know, as I said, you know, not all the schools stress that. Only the older traditions stress that. Dzogchen traditions stress that enormously because they're some of the oldest traditions, Buddhist traditions and lineages. So the left channel is called the moon channel and it's connected to the semen that we receive from our father. So the white is male, the left is female. The red is female, the white is male. It's called the moon channel and it is connected to anger. And the anger is the afflictive emotion that we're expelling on the exhale or anything that's difficult, aversion. We are exhaling and, and expelling aversion out of our body. Central channel is our wisdom, is the really, you know, our Buddhahood channel. It's blue. It's blue. And it is, we are expelling the, in, in its afflicted, and on uh, impure form, it is ignorance. In its pure form, it is enlightenment. And, so. and ignorance, can you elaborate on, on ignorance? I, the ignorance of what, per se? Ignorance of the nature of how we are and how all phenomena are. The ignorance of the empty nature of things. Uh, you can feel the spaciousness when we're doing the inhalations. But as when we are already getting to the central channel, you should start to feel tremendous spaciousness. You're also visualizing yourself as an empty container, maybe without even boundaries, you know. But you're not, you know, you're you're not sensing yourself as a physical body with the organs and the meat and the bone and the blood. You are only sensing your energetic self, and you're sensing it in an, in an open environment. So that's what the ignorance is of really how the nature of things and the nature of ourselves. So ignorance can also include not being aware, or accepting, or thinking about interdependence, impermanence, dependent arising, and those things. All those things, cool. yes. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, ignorance really on, 
on the most ground level relates to not understanding the nature of things because the nature of our mind is the nature of all phenomena we are not distinct i mean the basis is the same so jason asks is it easier to visualize the breath moving clockwise and counterclockwise depending on your gender it's it's not really moving circular. It's, it's up and down. Going up and down. Yes, you're bringing through one nose. You're inhaling on one side down. and exhaling through the opposite side, and vice versa. And then you're inhaling through both nostrils for the central channel work. For on the third round, you're inhaling through both nostrils and exhaling through both nostrils. And then the last out breath, you're exhaling through your crown. But the inner, uh, the inhale is down, yes. and the exhale is. Up. And hold, you see on the chart, you know, four fingers below your navel. When you inhale, hold on each breath, on each inhale, hold for a moment and feel the spaciousness. And before you exhale, and remember what you're exhaling, what's going, and which channel is being used to exhale. It's not about uh, clockwise, it's up and down. The movement is up and down in the channel. A couple of people asking about, uh, they'd like to read more about this. Any suggestions, books that would have this kind of technique? The technique is called the nine, purif nine, nine purification breath practice. And there's a lot on the internet that you can find. There's some videos, uh, you know. Any specific teachers, the books? Uh, one girl, Tenzin, one girl, Rinpoche, does a beautiful work uh, called, uh, the book called The Sacred Body. Tenzin. Wangyal Rinpoche. Rinpoche. It's called the Sacred Body. Sacred he, Body. He does very, very beautiful uh, descriptions and work. A little passage I read of the description of the channels is from him. He does an entire uh, program on, uh, you know, uh, uh, the purification is just the the the, the initial uh, entrance into the Sacred Body, and then he goes through much more advanced practices. But I would suggest that first you familiarize yourself with the nine breath purification and your subtle body, the three channels. Can you show specifically the, the mudra? Yes, the mudra is we're taking our thumb and we're closing uh, right here at the ring finger. The bottom of the ring. The ring. Then we're closing the three fingers. We're keeping one finger open so that we can press on our nostril. But basically you're closing off right here at the tip of your ring finger. Great. where you have your wedding band great on both hands giselle our friend giselle uh thank you victoria being given the directions afforded me spa more space clarity and inspiration to stillness for meditation the chart was a wonderful vision to use while sitting thank you for sharing that I felt more centered and found it much easier to stay present without a wandering mind. Nine minutes flew by. Flew by. That's why we do it. That's why we do it. Uh, you know, the nine breath purification is pretty much used before most uh, meditation sessions. Okay. Thank you for that excellent explanation and guidance i found that very powerful and i'm very keen to introduce this to my daily practice the visualization was easier than i expected actually julia says that was from jacqueline Ju julia says i felt the sh exhaling ridding me of negative thoughts and energy yes thank you for sharing Good. Um, you want to share something else uh, with the students today? What was that? You want to explain uh, that? You know, every time that you feel the nine breaths, it, even though it's a, a preliminary to the, the formal meditation sessions, it can be used all the time. Use it for all difficult situations, not just as a preliminary to your formal sessions. And I uh, wanted to ask Nick to bring up the uh, card uh, of uh, Jipton Sumgon, who is a founder of uh, Drikon Kagyu lineage that Michael and I uh, uh, practice. That's Garchin Rinpoche's lineage, Drikon Kagyu. Drikon Kagyu is... And he's the founder, and he founded the lineage, was it 500 years ago? Yes. And uh, on the back of the card, 
I just wanted to read out. I'll have Michael read out. Jiktan Sungo, nine verses on view, meditation, conduct, and fruition that do not need to be looked for elsewhere. And I thought it was very appropriate to read it now because outside of our body and our mind, we don't really need to look for anything anywhere. We just simply have to bring our awareness to its ground. And we don't need anything beyond that. So can you read the... Uh, sure. Read off the card, please. Uh, Jigden Sumgum was 800 years ago. Sorry, not, not 500. Sorry. <laughs> My mistake. I have now understood the unceasing stream of thoughts to be primordial awareness. There is no need to look for a view elsewhere. I have now understood the undistracted ordinary mind to be meditation. There's no need to look for experience elsewhere. I have now understood my own mind that I have never parted from to be the Buddha. There is no need to look for fruition elsewhere. Where there is no grasping there, this is the view. Where there is no distraction, this is meditation. When there is no clinging, this is conduct. When, when there is no wish, this is fruition. So that's a very condensed version of uh, view, conduct, and meditation. Uh, and I thought it was very appropriate in connection to this practice because we really don't need to look anywhere beyond what we already have. So uh, I hope you enjoy, use the practice and, and enjoy it. Um, Neil says, thank you, Victoria. It was interesting how more active the breath became in allowing clarity of mind to be stronger. So a lot of people have uh, connected to this today. Um, maybe we'll do it again next week if you're available. It so, uh, might be good because this is, you know, it's it's pretty specific. Um, it's not complicated, but it's very specific, and it might be good to just have another instruction session to really solidify it with all for everybody. Sure. Because it seems to be of a lot of value to people here. And uh, um, great. Well, thank you for joining us and for your generosity thank and you. kindness and and. Uh, instruction thank you nick thank as you, always nick. for your generosity and kindness and thanks uh all of you for being here today let's dedicate the merit of today's class to the benefit of all beings by this merit may all beings attain the state of enlightenment and conquer the enemies of faults and delusions may they be liberated from this ocean of samsara and its pounding waves of birth old age sickness and death and once again, that book you recommended, Tenzin, T-E-N-Z-I-N, Wangyal, W-A-N-G-Y-A-L, -Y -A -L. Tenzin, Wangyal, Rinpoche, and the name of the book is? Sacred Body. Sacred Body. See you next week. <laughs>